We have opened a new channel for those who like to look at the detailed process of creating a project. While there are only a few videos, but we are working on their creation. We promise that it will be interesting. The link is in the description. Hi friends! Often friends and relatives who saw one or another of my videos asked me to remake a device for them. It also happened this time. For a long time ago, I did all sorts of different pulsed main soldering irons, which are able to quickly heat up, are lightweight and relatively compact. Another such soldering iron had to be done for a relative, so let's go directly to the point. Such soldering irons have a simple principle of operation. In fact, this is transformer, a secondary winding of which has a few turns of a thick wire that provides a big current. If you close short the output of secondary winding with a thin metal wire, the latter will begin to heat up. It is this wire in such a soldering iron in the role of a tip. The first such soldering irons had a lot of weight due to the use of a mains iron transformer in them. Now the same principle can be realized with the use of simple switching power supplies, which are much more compact and lightweight. Naturally, my project started with the search for the appropriate corpse. Unfortunately, there were no boxes from electronic transformers, which are excellent fit in size for such a soldering iron. Therefore, the box was made of a glass textilite. I cut the sheet, smoothed the edges of the blanks and glued it all with super glue with the addition of soda. The box came out very durable. Next was made a printed circuit board. Most of the components, including power transistors, you can get from the boards of the ballast of old energy saving lamps. The circuit is half bridge auto generator type. In fact, the simplified circuit of an electronic transformer for low voltage office halogen lamps. Power transistors can be any from the MJE line, MJE 13005, 13007, 13009 are excellent, but in my case, similar high voltage D209 transistors are used, which were once ripped from a computer power supply unit. There are only a few components on the board, transistors and capacitors in the half bridge converter circuit. We have a driver element, a symmetrical disenter DB3 with a frequency setting circuit, a control transformer, and a power transformer. The power transformer can be taken from any computer power supply unit. Next, we remove all the factory windings and wind up the new ones. The primary winding is wound with a wire of 0.55 mm and consists of 60 turns. The winding is done in layers. Each layer is insulated, for example, with a Captain heat resistant adhesive tape. Secondary winding is 1 to 2 turns of the copper bus. In my case, the wire was taken from the stator winding of the automobile starter. Laying such a wire is quite difficult, but possible. The dimensions of my core are now in front of you. In principle, the transformer for such a power supply isn't much critical, plus minus a few turns don't play a big role. Later I found in my stocks of all sorts of things a transformer that was done once uh, just for such a soldering iron. I already had windings and in addition a collect holder for the tip of such an industrial soldering iron. Therefore, at the last moment I decided to use this transformer. The ring transformer is from an industrial electronic transformer with magnetic permeability 2500. The size is now in front of you. The mains winding consists of 90 turns of 0.5 mm wire and the secondary winding has two turns with a triple wire of 16 American wire gouge. The latter is a multi-core wire in heat-resistant silicone insulation. As a bonus on the power transformer, you can wind several turns of additional winding, which will power the backlight. As an input diode bridge, you can use a ready-made diode bridge with a current of 2 amperes and a reverse voltage of at least 400 volts or assemble a bridge of 4 separate diodes. I use the bridge KBU1010. It's a 10 amperes bridge with a reverse voltage of 1 kilowatt. For such a power source it is too much, but the bridges were available and therefore set. 
Capacities of half a bridge are preferred for voltage of 400 volts, at least 250. The control transformer has three windings, two basic for transistors management and a current feedback winding, uh, which consists of only one turn. The transformer is wound on a fairy ring. Such rings can be found on ballast boards from energy-saving lamps. On the circuit, the beginning of all windings are marked. If the polarity of the winding isn't observed, the circuit will not work. The finished board must be checked for first turn on in series with one of the mains wires we connect 40 to 60 watts incandescent lamp. The circuit doesn't start without an output load, so when it is first turned on, it may not give signs of life. But if we load its output, the circuit will start. In our case, the output is loaded with a metal tip. The tip can be made, for example, from copper wire with a diameter of about 1 mm. Such a tip will have a high thermal conductivity, but it will have to be changed quite often. The second version of the tip is an iron wire. Due to the large resistance of the iron, the tip will heat up faster. This tip is more durable, but doesn't have a high thermal conductivity. By the way, an iron tip is often used in industrial soldering irons. The circuit works very calmly. Only the secondary winding will warm up because the heat from the tip is transferred to it. Power transistors in principle don't overheat, but it is desirable to install them on small aluminum radiators. In the case of using a common radiator, transistors must be isolated with plastic bushings and heat-conducting isolating gaskets. After checking the operating, you can turn on the soldering iron in mains without a safety lamp and then install it in the box. It is important that the device placed at the secure box because the board has a high voltage. For the box, it is better to use glass textilite or plastic. Because this class of soldering irons heats up instantly, no need to leave them turned on. Therefore, the power switch is a button without fixing, which starts the device. The button is usually installed in the handle of the soldering iron. That's all. The necessary links will be found in the description. Please don't forget to rate the video, subscribe to my Instagram, and if you have any questions, ask them in our official group. At this, I have to say goodbye. Until new meetings, with you was Kaysan TV.